Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the rundown. Um, as you can see, we're in the same space. So for those who have been keeping an update in the Discord server, I can touch him. Yeah, I can touch him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, we're finally here. I'm I'm here in LA. This isn't a temporary thing. My homeless ass moved in here with Brian so I could get a new start. And part of that new start is now I'm in Godforsaken Los Angeles. He's in Hollywood. Like Hollywood, Hollywood. Like off Hollywood fucking Boulevard. And I don't feel afraid telling y'all where that the fuck is because Hollywood Boulevard is longer than the fucking Odyssey. So that's neither here nor there. Very cool. Um, also, surprisingly, decent setup for a recording, all things considered. I was supposed to have a haircut for this today, but unfortunately, uh, my car does not want to turn on. I believe the wheel is locked and there's always shit going on with it. So what can you do? Yeah. Oh. It's unfortunate, but you know what? You know what they say. Yes, very much. Can't have shit in LA, I guess. That's not the phrase, whatever. Who gives a shit? But welcome back to this episode of The Rundown. I don't remember the number off the top of my head because it has been a legit fucking month. And this time, it's not Brian's fault that we didn't have an episode. But I mean, come on. Given the circumstance, I think everybody is like, yeah, you, it's okay. Suicidal ideation, admittance to the hospital. Moving 3,000 miles away. End of my relationship. Definitely. <laughs> it's been an ordeal, to say the least. We've been going through it, guys. But uh, we're here. So um, as for those who have watched the YouTube channel um, and listened to the podcast have probably known, um, Podcasts from High Media TV are moving exclusively to YouTube for the time being. Not even because it's that even that big of a deal. It's just like emotionally, I don't want to have to wait for two motherfuckers to upload at the same time and juggle releases on two platforms. Eventually, I'll I'll export everything over there. Audio only listeners on Spotify and everywhere else will be feeding. But for the time being, just get this shit's gonna be on YouTube. I'm sorry. Um Otherwise, but those who have been watching on YouTube and watching catching up with your with nerd news and high media and, and late night news, which was formerly high media TV news update, um, uh, I've been putting out those five days a week. I've been getting better at that, and I've also been taking the headline stories and turning those into shorts. I will be able to start going into more detail on those very soon because YouTube recently updated the youtube shorts to allow up to three minute videos oh cool yeah there are the three minute videos on shorts are a tiny bit different in the sense that they only allow for you can like the shorts policies as far as like copyright like for under 60 seconds does not apply in the same way because people would upload just like whole fucking songs and shit or they'll upload straight up clips of the random ass tv series no i know yeah so but at least for me, like, there's a lot. I have a huge, 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 huge backlog of clips from streams that were over a minute long that I couldn't put on YouTube Shorts that I put exclusively on the Clips channel that now I'm able to convert into Shorts and put on the main channel. So keep an eye out for those. Heard. But on to uh, uh, some main stuff. Um, I have, an, I have my, uh, a first impressions video coming out later this week, but Black Myth Wukong. I finally got a chance to try it. Brian has a lot of games that are a little bit of a different pedigree for me here on his PlayStation here. And we I have a different taste. <laughs> we have very different tastes. But I did get a chance to try Sparking Zero, and that was a very, very good game. I enjoyed that very much, though. So. That's all I needed to hear. That's all. You know, while, you know, the story mode and stuff like that might not necessarily be my cup of tea, I will say the arcadiness and over-the-top nature of it being a fighting game is kind of what I like. The more grounded 2D kind of vibe of your Tekken, Mortal Kombat, Fatal Fury, like, not my speed, unfortunately. And but, totally understandable. You know, so I like Smash, and now I'm realizing I like, you know, the Budokai format. Or arena, I would even make the argument you might more like arena fighters. Because mm -hmm. I have a strange feeling if I throw on, like, uh, Ultimate Ninja Storm Four. You'll you might like it as much as uh, Spartan Zero. Possibly. Nevertheless, let's return very quickly to Black Myth Wukong. Mm -hmm. Takeaways. How do you? So, without spoiling the you know video I made this morning, just cliff notes briefly touching yeah. on it. 
I think it is a very, very fun, very, very well polished for what I've seen so far, and very, very, you know, skill tested action game. It is not, in my opinion, a Souls like. It has elements of a Souls like, but I feel that is less to do with it intentionally being a Souls like and more to do with From Software's influence on the action game action rpg genre at large makes sense so that so that's kind of my synopsis and that's something that wasn't necessarily said in that video so if you guys want more detail on the mechanics and my thoughts about it there's that um as far as um other news briefly uh real quick i got you go for it uh, i saw this uh quite a bit ago prior to us recording the last podcast All right. but Supposedly, Steam will now let you sue Valve, uh, and they updated their subscriber agreement and dropped its force arbitration clause. Yeah. And a lot of the shit that's been going on, like, uh, again, I know we're a little outdated because it happened a few months ago, but, like, that Disney Plus story with the woman who died at Disney. Yeah. Uh, force arbitration is pretty much you have to, you are more inclined to settle with the company as opposed to reaching a settlement in court. Right. Uh, so the fact that Valve, one of the biggest online platforms for video game marketplace and other things, uh, is allowing it, it's it's a very good step in a very good direction. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe I made this point. I think this was actually the main story in a nerd news in the last week, oh, okay. or the week before. But I'm happy to touch on it again because like this is more of a discussion here than just me like ranting into a camera for five minutes. Um, I agree with with everything you just said and you made every single point i made in that nerd news the caveat i do want to say is is that this was a rule that was forced by the e by i think cal either the eu or california but and this is in this is a in this is a big but most companies expect would just have it only be applicable to certain regions Valve went the extra mile and said everyone. And said everyone. Now they did technically open themselves up to sh like potential fraud here, simply for the fact that by the way the that the actual subscriber agreement is written like this, is it could theoretically lead to um, it could theoretically lead to a bunch of zealous lawyers just constantly making you know arbitration agreements and stuff and getting paid by plaintiffs because valve said they would cover the cost of arbitration up to ten thousand dollars okay which you know any lawyer will look at that and he's like all right bet okay, let's find a bunch of case. aggrieved gamers and shit you know? real quick what is it called when you share your library with me off of steam what is that called uh family sharing i can only add one person a year and i haven't added anybody yet so i could probably add you probably we'll sort we'll sort it out after well the reason i was asking is only because i believe they made some i'll worry about it later no worries uh You're good. i also think it'd be cool if you're if noelia could play fields of mistra because mm -hmm. i know she wanted to play that um in other news and this was covered uh and uh this was and i and this was covered on the 18th short came out on the 19th uh microsoft removed the one dollar game pass trial again they took it away temporarily again. They did because it for Starfield because of Call of Duty yeah. Top Six. And I'll just say this really quick because we were talking about this before. Mm -hmm. uh, Steam updated their family sharing, so now if you have five people in your family, four of you guys want to play the same game, there needs to be four licenses. But now you could actually play separate games in the same library. If you're playing a game in your library, I don't have to not play one of your games as long as it's not the same game. And, and the caveat that they did to change that is is that they kicked everybody off of the family sharings, and you have to re-add people, and you can only, I think, add, like, one or two people a year to it. Maybe. I'm not saying you're wrong, but, yeah, so I just wanted to update yeah. that. So, uh, another another story, briefly, that I think was really, really cool. I shouldn't have fucking deleted the articles channel on my Discord. That was uh, a fucking mistake of mine. Hey, my Steam users, you could have up to five members in your family. So, and there's no year requirement. Yeah. But uh, let me actually, you know what, I'm going to do this. New perk for all of the, for High Media TV subscribers. 
if you are if you ha either give us a prime sub on twitch or donate like three like minimum three dollars through your choice of patreon ko-fi or discord subs and you like want to see the articles we cover in our podcasts Arna Coles. I post them. Uh, I post them in the category for um, uh, our uh, subscribers on Discord. So bear that in mind. Gotcha. But one of the things I wanted to talk about is is that one, uh, the former uh, CEO, I think the for former CEO or CFO of um, Sony, said that uh, the current state of the industry is untenable because he shifted industries. Well, well, he, he said that Double A is dead. Which, first of all. Double A games in a large publisher space is kind of dead. But double A games aren't, you know, dead across the board. Double A games are your hell divers, they're your pal worlds, they are your I disagree vehemently, and I'll tell you why. Sony is only trying to make the next uh uh what's it called? They're trying to make the next Fortnite, the next Apex Legends, yeah. the next whatever. Because that's where the money is. If so Sony... But they keep failing. If Sony recognized that their efforts are being wasted, they tried making Naughty Dog a traditionally single-player experience studio to make a whole multiplayer uh, uh, video game for The Last of Us. Not saying that it wouldn't have been amazing, but how come it wasn't an added-on feature in The Last of Us Part Two and The Last of Us Remastered? They both at, at both times they said it's going to be added in the future. It's going to be a for a future update, and when it comes, y'all are going to be ready and excited about it. I do not buy the idea that in this time when ninety percent of the games that are released on Steam that are of good quality look, look at Frostpunk Two, look at Dark Darkest Dungeon, Fields of Mistra, Fields of Mistra, look at uh, what's it called? Look at Power World, who just came to Sony. Literally, the, uh, I think last month they just released Sony uh, uh, Power World onto PS Five and Xbox. It's all kind it. It's now. good. You'll like it. Tried it. Not not a big, huge fan of the gameplay. Fair, fair. Survival games really aren't. Like yeah, it, it, it's it's less Pokemon with guns and more like. Arc Survival Evolved with Pokemon. Yeah, they, and, and I'm like, hey, I understand why people wanted this. I'm not talking shit on it. It's a great idea for how I, I got a level 48 character myself. But I'm just like, not for me. Uh, yeah, but at the end of the day, uh, this is all bullshit. Because this reflects, this goes back to Tango Game Studio being shut down. So I do want to say for the record, I don't, I, uh, I don't think they we're were, disagreeing. I don't no, think no, we're not at all. Uh, they were thankfully, or even disagreeing with him necessarily. No, I'm disagreeing with him. I'm saying if the idea that double A games are dead on a right. No, no, he's talking about from AAA studios. Like I, these publishers aren't investing and I'm saying, in them. Do like, you know how wrong you are? If Ubisoft came out tomorrow with a new Spyro game, the people would go insane. Right, right, right. <laughs> so the po so I want to be clear that the point being made here is is that studios are focusing all of their fucking effort on AAA games that aren't that keep fucking flopping, mm. and you know, and like he's talking about the vision of AAA in these higher spaces by these tri by AAA like like publishers and fuck him he's a part of no, no, the no. exact thing that he's talking right. about he's talking about he no he's talking about it as a bad thing i get that but what i'm what i'm sitting here and saying is if you're the reason for some shit going on in society technology whatever the case may be and then you comment on the fact that something you contributed to is actually an issue is actually a problem you don't get any fucking kudos from me from being for being uh, even, for having an e even fucking perspective. Good for you for having that perspective. But hey, you don't deserve a cookie from my perspective. Right. And like, you influ you were part of... Sony was one of the biggest pushers for AAA uh, being, being single-player uh, experiences for the longest time. It's the reason why they dominated the PS4 era. I think The Last of Us would like a, a last of us that takes a um like i just is a, is a total co-op experience like a take it takes two i think that would be a really interesting like take on it la on the last of us without a doubt the only reason that i don't say sony has had uh single player experiences and has been killing the game since the playstation one or two mm -hmm. is only because they failed so amazingly during the playstation three generation after the PlayStation 3 generation where they fucked up on the price, they fucked up on a lot of different shit, Sony really smarted up entering the digital age. 
But yeah, they they killed it in the PS4 era. Not to say that the PS3 era wasn't bad. I had a PS3. It just there were too many hiccups in the beginning for them to actually outsell hey, the Xbox 3. As as a kid with cheap fucking parents who did who 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 generally reviled and demeaned video games as an interest. Not having to pay for being online was pretty fucking nice. Oh, trust me. Again, not talking shit on Sony for that. And then they fucking change it. But well, now everybody does, so you can't avoid it. And plus, we're adults now, so, like, whatever. Like, But, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because they, they hound Helldivers 2 as being such a huge success. And after all that shit happened with... They having, kneecapped it. it. With having to sign up for a Sony account, they destroyed the game. The only thing that would have been a Fortnite, that would have been a Apex Legends, that was a Sony exclusive and also on PC. I mean, what realistically are we fucking talking about? Because uh, these industry leaders who are having this come-to-Jesus moment, it just... It, it, it's a little too little too late. Because what are you doing now to show that you actually think this is an issue? They're not going to... even in the industry anymore, as far as I, I'm aware. Uh, good for him, I guess, but... <laughs> like, uh, maybe that's the reason why he feels like he can say this shit. And I get it. Yeah, a lot of it is the studio execs, they want to make their money, they want to do their shit. I get that completely. But I'm just like, at the end of the fucking day, return... <laughs> Return to Jack and Daxter. Return to Spyro. Return to all of these IPs that have been given a 20-year hiatus, just like Budokai Tenkaichi. Look at the reception that a 20-year in the making game has received. It's insane. Meanwhile, you have, and and I'm going to be very clear by this, I'm a dirty Bethesda fanboy. I'm going to buy whatever the fuck Bethesda makes. I will shit on it if it's bad. I will love it if it's good. What do you think of Shattered Space? I didn't buy it and play it. I still haven't beaten. I still haven't even finished my first playthrough of, of Starfield yet, so I'm not going to buy a fucking DLC until I beat that shit. Mm. And even then, Starfield has a new game plus mechanic, so it's probably going to be a little fucking bit before I even want to go get Shattered Space. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like there's a, like listen, there is enough fucking content in like Starfield that. I had to change the way, like, the problem with Starfield, and I'm going to go on my fucking, you know, soapbox here for a second. Um, The biggest fucking issue with Starfield is that it is a departure from what makes Bethesda games interesting to play. Bethesda games are all about the handcrafted content. The best parts of Bethesda games are the quests... The best part of Bethesda games are the locations. The best part of Bethesda games is the handcrafted aspects of the game that are interesting. That's part of what makes the best mods good. The handcrafted new things that add new life into the world is what makes in the sandbox nature of how Bethesda's engine, the creation engine, functions (laughs) is what makes, like, the fact that the Bethesda game engine makes every item have its own physics makes the world incredibly responsive and uh, reactive as a sandbox. And this, and secondly, it also makes it so, you know, issues with the game can be compartmentalized. If there, if your game, if like you fuck around and blow up a bunch of bullshit in a part of the game, you can just leave that cell, never go back. And the game will keep functioning and not crash. You know, so so for me as somebody, like, I, the, the issue is, is that <clears throat> Starfield takes the, the weakest aspect of Skyrim, which is the Radiant Quest system, which, don't get me wrong, when you are max fucking level, like, you're like level 90 or some shit, you've beaten every other real quest in the game, you've done all the Creation Club content that you purchased, like, you've done everything... Then you just want to like fuck around a little bit and like go kill shit and, and do a couple dungeons. The radiant quests help with that direction, but it is not a substantial means of play for the main gameplay loop. And the problem with Starfield is ultimately is there are a thousand planets with very little on them. You have to travel. There's a reason why Shattered Space all takes place on a single planet. And you do not have to really get up into your spaceship to, like, go to different places. The most cumbersome act part of questing is not even going from planet to planet, but from system to system. Because 
So if you want to teleport from wherever the fuck you are on a planet, you first have to go and set course to a star system. Then you have to load into the star system, not at the location you want to go to. If it's not at the default planet that, like, in that system, you have to then fast travel to that planet. And, by the way, when you first enter the system, you have to wait upwards of 10 seconds before you do anything else because they have a mechanic of, depending on the system you're in, scanning you for contraband. Which is cool, like, you can do, like, and there's, like, perks that, like, make it harder for them to scan contraband, and you can be an outlaw, which is fine. Cool part of, like, space pirate, whatever. But when you're just trying to get from point A to point B, especially if you have to travel through multiple different systems to get to the place you want to get to, you have to fast travel, like, six or, like, even in the worst cases, six or seven times before you get to the system that you want to get to, and then you have to fast travel to the planet you want to go to in that system, and then you have to land, which is another loading screen. The pro the biggest issue with Skyrim and Oblivion and all of it was the loading screens, and the process of getting from point A to point B in Starfield is inundated with loading screens. Now, for what I'm aware is that there are perks and stuff that can lessen this process, but that does it does a perk lesson fashion it, it makes it so you can just teleport from surface to surface but here's the thing that should have been a default thing like i understand that part of the it makes it consumable yeah no i understand the purpose of starfield is like the fantasy of being like a space captain and shit i get that but you know space combat i like it I like it conceptually. I'm, I'm not great at it, and, I, and it's not my favorite thing in the world, but I can see it's very well done and a good and like an interesting thing. I also like that you can knock somebody's engines out and dock them, board, and kill everybody in there, and then you're good. Like that, like you can do like boarding parties and shit. That's cool. But the act of going from planet, from location to individual location is cumbersome. Now, outside of that being one of be, making it very, you know, frustrating to complete multiple quest lines especially multiple quest lines at once what is really good is the atmosphere the spacefaring feeling of it like what you're not going to do is just pick a direction and go that is not an effective or fun way to play star and that's why i never played it after getting to the second quest yeah the only way to play starfield and genuinely have fun really especially in your first playthrough you can fuck around once you are in your second playthrough and you have unlocked a lot more skills and you have a lot more options because so much of like so many mechanics are locked behind skill trees is just doing quests and questing with people and, and, and exploring location question how are you still a bethesda fanboy when they aren't even following the fucking uh method that used to make their games feel magical because ultimately when i play starfield specifically to do the questing and, and exploring the locations and going through the storylines i genuinely am enjoying myself yeah. it genuinely does feel like a good bethesda game in that regard but am i doing the base building that was in fallout 4 that i stunk hours and hours into fuck that no I have no, because there is so many locations and so and and you're not really like tied down to any one system not really there's no reason to build a base like like i'm not getting into the crafting by the virtue of how the loot system works more often than not if i kill a hard enemy they're gonna have some good shit on there on them that i can just equip to myself and i don't need to craft things i don't need to like what things like all of those systems are fun and great and all and i'm sure they're quite powerful once you get through it but for me i have absolutely no reason to engage with those especially on a first playthrough so like the, those t types of time fillers that you, will make you spend hours and hours and hours in fallout 4 aren't even a thing here well, that's exactly why I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm just like, I hear you, and I know uh, the experiences you value regarding... It's because I paid for the fucking game, before, I'm going to play it. Before we even get into that, yeah. I, I'm strictly talking about... Also, you, let's talk about what color of an idiot you are that you didn't just you play through Game Pass, that you actually brought the game itself. Well, here's my thing. I was really fucking excited for it. Yeah, you were drinking the Kool Aid. I don't blame you. Like, Trust me, I get it. Like, it's the first that's the game since Fallout seventy six, right? Right. And, so and I understand. Thing, I played the shit out of Fallout seventy six, but I knew what the fuck Fallout seventy six was going to be. 
I knew that it was going to be a trash shoot, but it was a new Fallout game in a new environment, and what I love about the Fallout games is exploring the world. And Fallout 76, for all of its flaws throughout time, you can always explore it is, the world. It, it, the, the world of Fallout 76 is one of the most intricate and detailed in any Fallout game made by Bethesda, period, the end. And if you like exploring and ambient storytelling, and even like some of the quests now with the voiced NPCs, it is good. I highly suggest it. But I knew going into it on launch, I knew what the fuck was going. Like, dog, I was even I, like, I played with more. I played it so much, I ended up in a lobby on a team playing with Moist fucking Critical. Oh, Jesus. No, I'm not fucking kidding. I'm. St I still have. I still have a, a friend. Him uh, as a friend on fucking um 76 so you know for me it's you know starfield was like this was like the first legit bethesda game return to form that's the thing i knew Fallout 76 wasn't being made by the people in maryland it was being made by the people in texas but see you're i'm just uh equating it to my cyberpunk 2077 initial initial reaction you'll have to play it on four so you, you guys have been more fucked regardless no no, no i know but I, i'm just like i don't know it's weird when a studio that is so known for making a specific genre and formula game starts to fuck up with it. Either because it's too samey or they try to do something completely different. And what I mean and they by did that, try to do something completely different here. The problem is is, is that mm -hmm. the structure of Bethesda games in terms of like the, like the different cells and loading screens, it, it, if, if, if Starfield came out in 2015, it would have been a hit. The, that type... I like Bethesda's game design, and it is dated. But what I'm saying is, Bethesda and Ubisoft are two examples of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. here. Stay, Ubisoft is staying too close to the same formula, never really changing it, and people getting sick with it. And the Bethesda trying too much at too too many different things all at once to try and in in a game that's supposed to be the return to form of single player experience exploration whatever the fuck yeah right? i just don't understand how they managed to say that this was going to be uh likened to a fallout experience or likened to a uh skyrim experience and then do something completely different and not have any of the marketing material or any of the build-up leading to it really go into detail about why that is yeah it's ult ultimately just trust me. I was hyped as fuck when Starfield, when the uh, uh, marketing for Starfield was being released and, sh and shit too. They did a whole thirty minute fucking presentation of the goddamn game, and not once did they explain. Well, actually, listen, it's not gonna be you drop on a planet, walk one direction, and you could figure some shit out. You're gonna have to play it the way we want you. Yeah. <laughs> well, granted, like the thing is, they probably didn't like. It automatically generates stuff in like in in locations and structures and stuff. Yeah, but it has shit to do except for fucking mobs and goddamn random. Uh, yeah, like saying, it, like it, random it, events like in Red Dead Redemption Two. If that was a mob fucking feature in Starfield, and I could go off on the second planet, run into some uh, alien astronaut, being like, "Yo, help me, my nigga, I need some fucking time space continuum stuff," I'd be like, "Okay, cool." Yeah, they, they, it had radiant quests like that, but the problem is, is that like the radiant quests in Skyrim. Eh, I'm saying that actually have value. Uh, uh, the reason why so many of the uh, random encounters are so fucking uh, memorable from Red Dead Redemption 2, GTA 5, uh, again, I understand it's a separate game studio. Yeah. I'm just like, you can make interesting radiant slash random events, radiant quests slash random events that actually have lasting impact. It doesn't even have to do anything with the story. And it's Bethesda. Y'all are great at writing. At least y'all used to be. <laughs> no, honest to God, like the like the actual like stories and stuff and, and quests and stuff that we actually have in Starfield. Writing's good. The characters feel very pretty compelling. I will say though, I have heard too many arguments on the other to agree with you. I I will say one one of the things I will will say is is, is that your character very much is like Fallout is a very much like a force of nature kind of like go, like I'm just along for the ride type of character, mm -hmm. not so much a pivotal like integral like fucking. Skyrim. Or, or you might be. I'm not far enough in the fucking qu being quest to like make that determination. But I gotta be honest. I think that's the expectation for Bethesda main characters. Like you're not gonna get a B. You're not gonna yeah. get a a, uh, a Geralt. Yeah, I think ultimately 
like I know that the next Bethesda game is going to be pretty, obviously. That's not even a question. Like it's not going to be as pretty as like Cyberpunk or some shit, but it's gonna it's gonna look like five years graphically behind. Whatever, who gives a shit? I don't care. I, I'm not. You know me. I'm not somebody who gives a fuck about graphics. What I need is is, is that I I I want like they very much. This was the thing about Starfield. You have to remember is that this was like kind of Todd Howard's dream. He want he'd been waiting for twenty odd years to make this shit. He had been wanting to make this. But shit. bear with me. And that's exactly, and not that I disagree with you, mm -hmm. but that's exactly why Mega Cockalypse is so fucking trash right now. Because my man who made The Godfather did the same exact shit. Took twenty years off of filmmaking and then made a huge stinky dog, uh, dog shit. Well, no, up. well, no. It's <laughs> it's more like Todd Howard was trying to get the clout in the in the in the respect from from over from like his higher ups to like say. Yeah, just go make your make your like dream project. Who gives a shit? You made us so much fucking money. Just go do that, and and he did. And I think that if a lot of media today, <laughs> happening a lot of media. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Joker too. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like if Starfield, mm -hmm. I feel like if you if I feel like if you if the traveling the fast travel mechanics of Starfield was not as cumbersome. I feel like it would be a much more acceptable game. It just doesn't make sense to me. What I'm saying is, how simplistic it is to fast travel in Skyrim and fucking... Uh, how many buttons do you have to press in Skyrim? What? Max three. Start button, that's one. Mm. X to press the location. X one more time to confirm it. Three. Three buttons max. Yeah, four if you, if you can't consider clicking the map or going up. Easy peasy. Starfield, it is you have to, and this is only, and this is if you're on keyboard and mouse. If you're on fucking control, you have to hit the start menu. You have to scroll, select the star map. You have to go out. You have all the way from the your loca local map, which is like two or three button prompts. You have to then scroll over to the system that you actually want to go to. You click on it. And then you focus in, and then you pick one of the two to of uh, one to three planets that you want to like initially teleport to. By the way, not all the fucking celestial bodies you can teleport to. So if it's not one of those initial one to three, you you have to tell you have to jump to that system, and then you jump to it, and then you if you're in 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 like a non in, in like a settled space or something, you you get scanned. So you have to wait ten seconds before you can do anything else. Okay. And, and then you have to open up the map again. Now you're on the gal the the system map, and then you have to click the fucking like thing, the planet, and then you zoom in on the planet, and then you click the landing, then you click the landing zone, and then you can tell, and then you can teleport to that. Well, that is that is what it, it to go from point A to point B is like in Starfield, and I don't care how much I like neon and how it has like <laughs> space cyberpunk vibes. I don't care how much. Fucking Cheyenne feels like fucking Fallout New Vegas in vibes and real like like the different like areas and like I don't care how like the the like uh fucking Jameson feels like um like Star Trek and shit like I love like how unique like the unique locations the, are and stuff. And the Outer Wild, yeah, uh, not the Outer Wilds, the Outer World. I did. I I only got to. I only finished the quest in the first area. I I, I dropped right. it after that. What I'm saying is that is a game that came out I think like 2018, 2019, uh, around 2020. Uh, they have multiple planets. That's fully explorable, and it makes no sense to me that Bethesda could not figure out a menu system that would be two or three button prompts. No, what what Starfield needed to be. You talking to it, it just needed to be in one system. And bear with me, we're not talking about a fucking double A developer either. This is not some shit that they have never made before. What I what I don't understand is how can Black Myth Wukong have a hundred and uh, over 250 fucking skills that you can manage to go through every single one and see what each one does but i can't get from one fucking simply get from one planet to another in starfield that's insane to me black moon the blue kong's goddamn studio is a first time studio or like has only other only ever made uh like concept video games and i'm like <laughs> starfield is the perfect example of overcomplication of mechanics 
an overabundance of mechanics can overwhelm somebody. There's a reason why Death Stranding is a very niche game. There's a reason why, like, literally Kojima had to, like, say, all right, I'm fucking tweaking. He was going to have a p piss meter. Yes, I and know. piss management. Like, insane levels of detail. Like, it's too much. And, star and here's the thing. The crafting system in Starfield, uh, like, in regards to, like, in all the different kinds of crafting you do, spacesuit, weapons, cooking, pharmaceuticals, space, like, all that, all individually pretty solid. But and, when and, the and the research mechanics, too, better than, like, like not, I, I mean, like, it's certainly more streamlined compared to what it was in Fallout um, 4. Granted, I think Fallout 4's UI was better, but regardless, it's good. The spaceship building very good one of the best spaceship building like like interfaces and mechanics i've seen in any space game including no man's sky which i think is probably the best fucking space bearing game you can get for your money on the market right now um the shooting feels really good it's like it's software came in again to like fucking make that shit feel tight and it's good you know the the space the space fighting is good like like there's so many aspects of this individually that are good but because all of them are kind of just like glomped together like the the, the settlement building aspect of it is really good and verbose but it's again all of these things are locked behind multiple different skills and because the game expects you to go through multiple different new game plus iterations to unlock everything and, so there, and there's so many skills and you need and like you you only are going to get to like one of the like end game skills by your, by only by the time you're level 30 and because you can all because like each bar on one on each skill line will unlock as you unlock like certain amount of points in each thing I genuinely what would be the argument for playing starfield when 90 percent of the features in the game are done better in other games i i think I say I'm saying even the Bethesda, even even the Bethesda feel it can be better felt. This game, it. this game, like no, because the specificness of Bethesda feel is unique to their engine. No, I'm saying though, what makes somebody play Starfield over Fallout Four or Skyrim? Good point. My thing is that the only reason I feel well, like you, and this is why I play Starfield, is if you have like me played Skyrim to death. Mm -hmm. and played fallout 4 to death mm -hmm. you know the, the, if you like i have a harder like i love fallout 3 i love fallout new vegas the shooting in those games are hot cheeks and garbage it's a separate generation the the shooting in starfield is tighter than it was in fallout 4 now you know i i will say that the actual combat of starfield and the and the moment to moment questing in regards to like being in a location and doing quests is very good and I like it a lot and I and I feel like if you enjoyed Skyrim, if you enjoyed Fallout 4 and you're not one of these namby pammy boomers who who says, Oh, but that's the game used to be better. You'll like Starfield for what it is, and as you play further in the game, you'll in and, and, and slowly, not all at once, try to engage with certain mechanics and just take them piecemeal. You'll enjoy it, and then, you know, I can see how people go through multiple playthroughs and stuff like that. Hell, I might even do that with a single character. Because here's the thing. I love the concept mm. of a new game plus in a Bethesda game. I can, I won't, I feel like if I have a new game plus in a Bethesda game, I will not, I don't feel the need in, in, in Starfield, I don't feel the need to save Scott. I don't feel the need to go back and reload to get the exact outcome I want because I know yeah, I'm gonna be that later down the line I get to try again when my persuasion is better or my like skill checks are better and I can get the outcome I want or I can do a completely different thing. Yeah, just be real though. I this is kind of what I'm saying and I I love that in RPGs by the way. Like if you, if you, like give us your game pluses. Hold on. All I'm trying to say is, right. usually when I get into my Bethesda kick, once I play Skyrim or Fallout 4 for a few hours, I do not need Bethesda in my life again for like a good month. 
And I think that's what I'm saying here. Not that I disagree with any of your points, but you have a very big appetite for that uh, aesthetic and experience of game. And I... Yeah. I, I like think, I said, I'm a Bethesda fanboy. No, no, no. Like, I, I, sure. I, I don't tell people, no, it's actually good. No. Like, it's a, it's a dated-ass form of, like, game design and, and the engine... As much as like I love the feel of Bethesda games and and like how they design their games, I know that it is a decade like behind the curve. And and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying in this landscape of continue new games coming out every single every single day almost, if not every single fucking month. Uh, like what makes somebody actually play this versus uh, uh, the Obsidian's new game? Uh, not Obsidian, but. Uh, the their version of skyrim well what's stopping them from doing that about uh when it, that actually dropped so actually so so a city actually came out and said hey don't think of this as skyrim it's not it's not going to be like that it they're they're gonna it's apparently it's, it's gonna be like more like a linear game i guess vibe wise i think so um still sounds like the uh, outer worlds because that game legitimately was pretty the system it was just a map based it was map based rpg yeah. it was good no no shade but yeah, at the end of the day, I'm like, why? Not that I disagree with you. And if you already have the caveat of being a Bethesda fanboy, then yeah, obviously the game's for you. But I'm just saying for the regular gamer who's seeing the whole landscape right now of all the games available to them, and then looking at Starfield, what Shattered Space is DLC releasing or has been released, and just saying... I think Shattered... I think, I think Starfield is a dud. I, uh, honestly that's all uh, because... like, oh, no, oh no i have no problem admitting that yeah. if you love bethesda games or in it's obviously you know and, and you get bored with like it like the only time you should go back to starfield is if you get bored with bethesda with whatever bethesda games are out and you just want something new that's it if, if you just need more of that feel with new content that is the only reason to play starfield like you know and i gotta be honest respect you very highly for being able to say hey i know that i'm you know i i, I drink the kool-aid of this fucking company it is what it is and i'm just like and you're just like think? hey it's not it's not 10 out of 10 nobody's nobody's claiming that no <laughs> no bethesda game is really a 10 out of 10 like i'll say this about skyrim i have put in 10 out of 10 for like three and a half thousand hours at least over the course of my life well i was gonna say Skyrim. 10 out of 10 regarding value for money like yeah, the experience 100%. you get for a 60 dollar or i mean it's 20 30 bucks nowadays the elder scrolls skyrim is a great game it is a bad rpg uh, uh, uh sure. I, I as someone who has played that game for for hundreds and thousands of hours but we are it is a good game we a bad rpg we've already established that main characters in bethesda games are not actual people they are forces of nature literally they're, they're goku they're vegeta they're the one the golden child you know and you just so happen to always play this fucking badass and i appreciate that about bethesda games because it's like playing the call of duty yeah, campaign okay. Appreciate it. I I also find it kind of funny that you like Soulsborne, uh, so Soul Bites, but you also play games like this where you are just, I am the Soulsborne. <laughs> well, here's the thing. One of the things I like about FromSoft games is is that eventually, like you like it, it's about overcoming challenge. Just no, like, trust me, I, I get that aspect because I destroyed all the Valkyries in God of War. God bless your pee picking heart. God damn. Oh my fucking God. Trust me, I get overcoming the challenge and, you know, the euphoria you get it after actually beating the fucking boss that you've been stuck on. Same with Armored Core. Trust me, I, I feel you. I, I'm just saying it's funny that you enjoy games where you are the force of nature and then also you're just the guy who has to deal with Who becomes the force of nature. Yeah. You know, it's for me, it's like, I mean, the fantasy is kind of the same both ways. You know, you in Skyrim, you become the force of nature by accruing, you know, levels and um, abilities. In FromSoft games, you become the force of nature by getting better at the game. It's the same fantasy, just a different mode of becoming insane. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, realistically, you start off way better than you do in Souls 
so is very, very true. Yeah. But ultimately, the end goal is ultimately the same. Because like I, I will play. Oh, it's the same for every video yeah, game. I will play my level ninety Skyrim character in a new game plus mode I created, like through mods and stuff. Which, by the way, if you want to check those out, it's under community resources in the Discord channel. That's freely available to everybody. Oh, I'm calling you out, bitch. What's up? You didn't play any fucking Fallout London yet, and you need to because we were supposed to talk about it on the next time we did. I'm the gonna podcast. be. So, I'm gonna be so for real. Uh -huh. I don't want to downgrade my shit. No, I told you I have it on my computer. Oh, you have no you goddamn really? excuse. Okay, yeah, we'll, yeah <laughs> we'll do it that way. Okay, that's fine. It's fine. I'll Next episode is a fucking Fallout London discussion for at least 20 minutes. No, I have a, I have an, I have a RPG day sometime this week. I can probably do it then. Cool. Yeah, so if you guys uh, ch go check out himedia.gg slash live, there's the, the schedule there. I actually have definitive days of what types of content I do. Um, it's every day, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for anywhere between three to five hours. So there's plenty of time for y'all to catch me. Um, I'm at Pacific Time right now, so like it works because most of my audience is acclimated for Eastern Time things, but I can fucking start streaming at noon. And your mornings and your evenings. We're chilling. And you motherfuckers aren't active until like five, like five, like four or five, anyways. That's why, and that's the only reason I was like, hey. I think you should go until five, six is like, you know. Yeah, and past that point, like, like here's the thing. I know that I am sharing this space, like, with y'all. Like, there's a reason I get up at, like, six, seven, eight o'clock. So I have a few hours to, for the house to my fucking self. I feed the cats. I pet Winston, who's the adorable elderly orange cat that lives here. Um, Make some breakfast, shower, you know you know be a little menace and shit and, and and record all my shit without having to worry about other people being disturbed but you know like if i'm gonna continue streaming past like the five hour mark it's because i want to a and b like i accept like the by virtue of being in this space that it is not just my own like pat like before noon i will i will like be like i'll, I'll ask you guys hey can you please uh like use headphones for the TV or whatever. Just you know, I'm just trying to finish up this recording or whatever. And that's a, a good enough answer. It's also morning. Like people are chilling out. Like you know, you know, you don't have to be watching TV. You can be on TikTok. Who gives a shit? Yeah. You know. But like evening time, that's where like people are active and doing stuff. It would be deeply inconsiderate of me to like say, "Hey, I'm streaming. Shut the fuck up." No, literally. I just want to say to the people, anybody with a PlayStation, download this fucking app. PlayStation Stars, you receive benefits every single time you buy a game or DLC or anything, and you can use those uh, points to actually buy games, DLC, stuff like that. Currently, Power World, uh, the Dead Rising Deluxe Remastered Edition is on there, and uh, Astrobot, which may be my next big purchase. Yeah, Astrobot looks cute, but... Yeah. Also, um, I we're going to be um, we'll figure out like I know your schedule changes week by week, but I'd love to get like a set date for it, where we uh, take turns, um, playing each other's like games on Steam. So I'm I'm going to, uh, if not Armored Core, or something else. Brian wants me to try, and I'll play it on stream and watch him react, watch my reaction to it and stuff like that. One, we'll also um see if we can get the capture card for the uh, um. Uh, PlayStation set up and have it go into the stream. Um, and I'm going to have him play Bloodborne. This is going to be his first Soulsborne game. Not his first Souls like. He has beaten Jedi Survivor, so, which is why I'm starting him on Bloodborne and not Elden Ring. Uh, plus, I'll be honest, if you tried starting me on Sekiro, I don't think you would ever get me to play Sekiro is not a, front, uh, is not, is, is not a Soulsborne game, it's a, it's a rhythm game. But it is a soul. fight me on that motherfucker. It is a soul's born. No, uh, it, it, it is. A, it is a soul's born. But it's like mechanically, it's more like a rhythm. But you have no way to actually upgrade, so that's why. I mean, you do have ways to upgrade it. Your like attack, use different techniques and stuff. But like, it but is... you don't get like increased damage. Here's a whole new sword. Oh my god, here's a hundred. I mean, you actually do get a whole new sword. The the point I'm trying to make though is is that like you can't actually beat the game unless you get really good with the parry mechanic and the way that the parry mechanic functions is not unlike osu or another rhythm game like it mm. that's the point i'm trying to make um but yeah um shit we are 
50 minutes in and my mother did say she wanted to talk to me. I haven't okay. talked to her in a week. But for sure. ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to this first new episode live from the Olive <laughs> Yeah, God damn it. It's okay. it, I, it still doesn't feel real that I'm here and that I'm staying here. Again, it's only been it's been a week and a day. So Ugh. on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching the rundown. Um join our Discord. All of the fucking bullshit will be said by pre recorded Evan in the end screen. Um we'll see you guys next week. Do it. Hey. Thanks for watching. If you want to you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a, join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hibmedia.gg slash Discord. Discord link's there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hibmedia.gg slash Tim. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boot to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.